Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number 12 on using your Beagle Bone Black Microcontroller. What we're going to talk about today is we are going to talk about how to precisely control the position of a servo from the Beagle Bone Black. I think this is going to be a pretty fun lesson. I've had a good time putting it together already. First thing you will need to do is hook up your servo. I must warn you that all servos are different and some servos require a significant amount of power and if you try to power the wrong servo from your Beagle Bone Black, you can burn it out. I have verified that the servo I am using draws a small amount of current and will not damage the Beagle Bone Black, so I can safely connect the power line to pin 7. Okay, so this is on header P9, and I have pin 1, 3, 5, 7. <coughs> That's the 5 volt system signal coming off of the Beagle Bone. What I can say is, is that if you're not sure uh, about yours, you can control it. You can put a 5 volt on the servo from an external power supply. You can power the servo from an external power supply and you can still control it from the Beagle Bone Black. You just have to make sure that the power supply, the Beagle Bone Black, and the servo all are connected to the same ground. So you have to have a common ground. Safest thing is to control is to power your servo from an external 5 volt power supply. For me, I am safe, I have verified, and I am controlling it from pin 7. Enough said about that. I am controlling ground or I'm giving ground from the Beagle Bone Black pin 2 on header P9. <clears throat> and I am controlling it from GPIO pin 14 on header P9. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Okay, for my servo, control line is yellow, power line is red, ground is black. Almost all servos have three lines. Sometimes they're different colors. If you have a different color code, look in the instructions or the data sheet and see how your color code goes. But you will want power to 5 volts, you'll want ground to ground, and you'll want your control line to P9 header pin 14. Okay, enough said about getting that hooked up. Now, how do we actually get the servo to work? How do we control it? A couple of things you need to know. You need to know that for most servos, the full left position, the, the position of the servo is controlled by the pulse width in a PWM train. And usually full left you'll get when you are at about a one millisecond uh, pulse width. So at one millisecond pulse width, you'll be at the full left. At, uh, at uh, two milliseconds, you'll be at full right. So full left is one millisecond, full right is two milliseconds. We're going to be using a 50 hertz signal, and so a 5% duty cycle would correspond to a one millisecond pulse width, and a 10% duty cycle would correspond to a two millisecond pulse width. <clears throat> So roughly, as a starting point, if I do a 5% duty cycle on a 50 hertz signal, I should be full left. 10% duty cycle on a 50 hertz signal, and I should be full right. <clears throat> Those are ballparks. That's what we're going to use to fine tune <coughs> and to tweak this thing in. But we're going to find precisely what duty cycle gives us full left and precisely what duty cycle gives us full right. And then from that, from that, we'll come up with an equation that will allow us to input the desired angle, and then it will calculate the duty cycle that will give us that exact, uh, that exact angle. So what we got to do is we got to jump in, and we have to write some code. And what we're going to do with this code is we are going to kind of determine what those, this first code is just test code, and we're going to tweak the duty cycle on a 50 hertz signal to see what brings us to full left and what brings us to full right. So let's create a program. Grandma, let's go to my home directory, the squiggly. What do I have there? I have a folder called my Python. I'm going to change directory down into that, my Python. <coughs> you, sh you can create your own my Python folder if you don't have one. I like to go down in it and that way I don't have to give path names. What are we going to call this? Nano to edit the file and tweak. 
I think that's how you spell tweak. It's close enough. All right, on this program, what do we want to do? We're just going to basically apply duty cycles and tune in and see exactly what two duty cycles on a 50 hertz signal will give us full left and full right position. What are we going to have to do to begin with? We are going to have to import the most excellent add to fruit bpio.pwm library as PWM. We're importing the PWM library so that we can put a PWM on that pin 14. We need to say our servo pin is, what did we say it was? It was on header 9, so we say P9 for header 9, and then it was pin 14. So capital P9 underscore 14 is saying that our servo control line is hooked up to pin 14 on header P9. We need to uh, we need to start that. So we're going to do pwm dot start. What pwm pin do we want to turn on? Well, we want to turn this one on that we called servo servo pin, and then we want to start it at. Okay, well we said about a five percent duty cycle. So this is the duty cycle five percent. And what did we say for the frequency 50 hertz? So we're going to start at a duty cycle of 5% on a 50 hertz signal, and that should move the servo all the way to the left to start with. Then what we want to do, we want to loop forever while 1, because 1 is always 1. The colon <coughs> indicates the start of the while loop. We tab over. The clauses are defined by the indentation on Python. It doesn't matter how far you tab, but it all has to be tabbed exactly the same within this clause. We need to, uh, we need to try different duty cycles. So we need to ask the user for a duty cycle. So I'm going to say duty cycle. I'm going to input it from the keyboard. So I say equal input. What message do I want to put? What duty cycle. So I'm asking the user for a duty cycle. <coughs> close my quotes, close my parentheses. And then what do I want to do? I want to do a uh, pwm dot set duty cycle. Where do I want to set the duty cycle? On servo pin. What do I want to set it to? Duty cycle that I just got from the user. <clears throat> what am I trying to do? I'm asking for a duty cycle. I'm applying the duty cycle. Then when I run the program, I'm going to tweak that inner duty cycle to find exactly what duty cycle puts this in the full left uh, or horizontal position. Make sense? How do I save the program? Control O, Enter, Control X. How do I run it? I say Python. Don't have to put a, file, a path name because I have already gone down in that folder. Peak. Ooh. Okay. What duty cycle do I want? Well, let's try. Uh, we said that a duty cycle of about 10% should move us full right. So I'm going to go 10. That's not quite full right. Let's try 11. That's not quite full right. 12. Boom. That looks like perfectly full right. So I'm making note that for me, full right is a duty cycle of 12. Your servo will be different, but write this number down. What number took you just to full right? Don't keep going because then your number will be wrong, but see which one takes you just to full right. Like if I go 11, it's going to back off a little bit. Oops, that's not good. 11. Oops, that's not good. 11. And now if I go to 12, it will go just a little bit further. So I haven't like driven it into saturation. So my full right position is 12% duty cycle. What do I want to do now? I want to find the full left. So we said 5 would be about close. 5% uh, should be about a millisecond. Look at that. That's not quite close enough. Let's go 4. Yeah, that goes a little further. 3. Yeah, that's a little further. 2. That's a little further. 1. No, 1 was too far. 2. 2 puts us full left, and then 3 
comes back a little bit. Two is full left. <clears throat> My servo has a full left on a 50 hertz signal of 2%. My servo has a full right at a duty cycle of 12%. On a 50 hertz signal. So my two numbers were 2 and 12. 12 and 2. So let's look. 12 all the way that way, 2 all the way that way. <coughs> you have to find those two numbers for your servo and write them down. For me it's 2 and 12. Write the numbers down for your servo. Let's exit out of this with control C. Now I am ready to uh, do a little math. Okay, we got to do a little math here. So, this is what we are going to do. <clears throat> if I have a desired angle of zero, that's full left, I need to apply a duty cycle of two. So, to get zero, I apply two. That's one point. To get a desired angle of 180, I apply 12. I have two points, the point 0, 02 and the point 180, 12. If I desire 0, I put a duty cycle of 2. If I desire 180, I put a duty cycle of 12. On your two points, it will be 0 something. It might not be 2, but it's 0 something, that number you just figured out. <clears throat> your second point will be 180 something whatever it was that you just figured out. Mine's 180.12, yours will be 180, whatever you figured out. Yours will be 0 something and 180 something. <clears throat> Once you have that, we need to draw a line between those two points. And so we got to calculate the equation of the line. How do we calculate slope? M is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for me, it is 12 minus 2. Those two points, those two points will be different from you. Your y values will be different. Minus 12 and 2. Divided by, yours will still be this, 180 minus 0. Okay, so for me, the slope is 10 over 180 or 1 over 18. Using the point slope formula of the line, we know that y minus y1 is m onto x minus x1. So I say y minus y1, what's y1? It's 2. Is equal to m, the slope, 1 over 18 times x onto uh, x minus, or 1 over 18 onto x minus 0. Why 0? Because it is that 0 there. So y minus 2 is equal to 1 over 18 onto x minus 0. So y is equal to 1 over 18 times x. Move the 2 over and we get plus 2. So let's put our real variable names in. The duty cycle is going to be that we're going to apply is equal to 1 divided by 18 times the desired angle plus 2. Your equation will be slightly different because your 12 and 2 will be different. It will be the numbers that you determined when you ran this little experiment. I hope this makes sense what I'm saying. <clears throat> this is the equation. So now let's go in and write some code. And I'm going to make note that y is equal to 1 over 18 times x plus 2, or duty cycle is 1 over 18 times desired angle plus 2. Okay, so let's write a program. Nano servo. This is my servo program. What do I need to do? Well, I need to input that library. Add a fruit underscore bbio dot pwm. Okay. I need to say that the servo pin, where am I controlling this from? Remember, we were on header 9, p9 underscore 14. This point here is pin 14 that we have the yellow wire connected to. All right, we need to fire up our PWM signal. So we say PWM.start. <coughs> Where are we going to put it? We're going to put it on servo pin. What initial value do we want? We'll put like a we'll put a, a duty cycle of two. Always for the math to work, you've got to use a 50 hertz signal. For all this PWM stuff, we are using 50 hertz signals. All right, you're going to keep track of that 50 hertz. So we're going to cl close that out. So we're going to start our PWM on our servo pin with an initial 
pull or an initial duty cycle of 2% on a 50 hertz signal. That should put it somewhere in the area of full left. Okay, now we're going to loop forever while 1, because 1 is always 1. And then we're going to tab over. And then we're going to ask the user what angle they want to go to. So we're going to say desired, desired, desired angle and we're going to get it from the keyboard by saying equal input we'll give them a prompt what's the prompt what angle do you want question mark space quote close parentheses i usually forget to do one of those things but we close the parenthesis we close the quote we close the parentheses so it's going to ask him to input from the keyboard what his desired angle is all right, from that desired angle, we need to calculate duty cycle. So duty cycle is equal to, you use your equation. Don't use my equation. My equation is for my servo. You use the equation for your servo. I showed you how to get the equation. So it is going to be equal to, if I remember right, it was 1 divided by 18. Very important. I have to help students every day debug their programs, and this is one of the number one reasons that you get errors or unanticipated behavior in your program. In Python, if you say 1 divided by 18, 1 is an integer, 18 is an integer, it does integer math. 1 integer divided by 18 integer in integer math is 0, okay, because that's the closest integer, it rounds it to 0. Integers don't have the in-between numbers. If you want the in-between numbers, you have to force Python to do that by saying not 1 the integer, 1 point the floating point number, divided by 18 point the floating point number. <coughs> this forces floating point math, and then you will get a good answer. Okay, times what? Times desired angle that you just input plus 2. Your 2 and 1 divided by 18 will be a little bit different depending on the math that you did based on our earlier experiment on your servo. Now what do we do? We apply that. So we do pwm.setDutyCycle, set underscore duty underscore cycle. Where do we want to set the duty cycle? On the servo pin. What do we want to set it to? Duty cycle that we just calculated here. I think this program is going to work. So I'm going to go Control O, Enter to save it, Control X to write out, and now we are going to Python the program servo. All eyes on the servo. Oh, oh, mmm. I hope you guys caught that. Nano servo, import BBIO. BBIO. <coughs> Got to get everything exact. Control O, enter Control X. All eyes on the servo. Ow! I'm making a lot of mistakes today. Add a fruit. What did I do wrong there? Add a fruit. Let's go back and look at that again. Nano servo. Oh, not input, import. Idiot. I am an idiot. Import. And I'm supposed to be teaching you. I hope you guys caught that. Import. Control O, enter, Control X. All eyes on the servo. PWM is not defined. I am sorry. I am making so many mistakes today. Let's take a look and see what happened here. It says pwm.start. pwm is not defined. Okay, let's uh, look at that. Ah, import Adafruit BBIO pwm as pwm. Man, I just got that first line all messed up. I hope I got my act together after that first line. We import the Adafruit underscore BBIO dot pwm library as pwm. Control O, enter Control X. Python servo, at least it's running this time. Okay, I'm going to put, I want an angle of 90, and let's see what happens. Look at that. Boom! Is that 90 degrees? I ask you, is that not 90 degrees? That is 90 degrees. Let's go to one, 180. 
boom! Is that not 180 degrees right on the nose? Math works. When you go in and calibrate your servo and you do the math, it works. Now it works perfectly. It's not some doofus almost thing. It's perfect. What if we say zero? Boom, zero. What if we say a 45 degree angle? Boom, 45. What if we say a 30, 135 degrees? Boom, 135, 90. Look at that. We got perfect control of our servo because we did the math. Well, I, I did the math. I hope you did the math. Uh, I teach math, and students are always asking me, well, when are we ever going to do this? Well, you see, you have to know how to do the equation of a line if you're going to get the servo to behave perfectly. And a lot of times in class, I'll see kids, and they're just sitting there trial and error and trial and error and trial and error. I say, look, do the math. Draw a line. Find the slope. Find the equation. Boom, you'll have it working. How long did that take? Like three minutes? Okay. This was a great lesson. We have learned how to control a servo using the BeagleBone Black. Hope you guys liked the lesson. If you liked it, give it, give it a thumbs up. Think about sharing it. Think about subscribing to the channel. You guys leave me comments. You know, sometimes I think I'm sitting here talking to a wall. I don't know if anybody ever even watches these things. Leave a comment. Give me some feedback. Give me some suggestions. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.